Hello friends, it's Dave here from Save Decks and today we are bringing you a double review video where myself and Sophie have each taken a look at a game and will present to you a mini review. Before we take a look at those games, please consider subscribing to our channel. We are on the road to a thousand subscribers and have a heavy week of reviews, so we are grateful for all of your support. Both of today's games were provided to us by the publishers, so thank you very much for that. The game I have been playing is called Sun Wukong vs Robot, sounds interesting, but before we get to see what that is, let's pass you over to Sophie for her review. Over to you Sophie. Thank you Dave. So today I'm going to be talking about Farm for Your Life. So the premise of Farm for Your Life is that your farm has been destroyed by a storm and it's up to you to build up again. But wait, there seems to be some sort of zombie invasion where they come and steal your produce. So in the game, you chop wood with an axe, you mine rocks with a hammer, you dig a patch with a shovel, and you cut grass with a scythe. Your normal farming sim. Plant, water and fertilise fruit and vegetables, build a fence to keep the zombies out, and also manage your own restaurant. With the restaurant, it kind of has an overcooked feel to it where you put the right ingredients in the pot, and then you deliver it to the customers and then wash up the plates so that you've got plates available for the next customer. In this game you don't get coins, you trade items. So you get scrap metal and you also get like motherboard bits I think. I don't know what they are but they, they look like motherboard bits. With these items and also wood and rocks that you collect you can upgrade your restaurant, your campsite and your farmland. So for the restaurant for example you can get juices or more seating. For the campsite you can get more tents and then that means that more people move in and there's more helpers which is really useful actually when you want someone to run the restaurant and you can collect wood and rocks or also harvest your vegetables and fruit. And with the farmland you can get sprinklers, crates and a compost maker which you can make compost or fertilizer with so that you can fertilize your plants because your plants ask for water and they ask for fertilizer in order to grow, much like real life. In order to serve new food items in the restaurant, you get the opportunity to learn a recipe. And every time you learn a new recipe, you have to do a small mini game where you press the right button as the vegetables or fruit flies over the pot, but it needs to be just before it flies over so the trajectory of the falling bits land in the pot. I found this mini game very difficult in the sense that there's a timer and in order to get two stars, not that there's a necessity to get two stars, but in order to get two stars, the time limit for it seemed to be unachievable to me anyway. Next I'll talk about the controls and this is where the game really falls flat. The controls in this are very janky. I feel like this game wasn't made for Switch and it's kind of obvious. I, I looked up and Farm for Your Life seems to be a game on Steam, so perhaps it was actually made for PC before the Switch, which makes sense. So you've got the right stick to move, as you do. You've got the lef left stick to aim the direction you want to be in, A to interact, and B to drop or place. The movements in this have to be quite precise. For example, when you're picking produce, sometimes I'd accidentally pick up the sprinkler that I was using to water the plants. And also when you're placing a fence. So here's an example of my first attempt at making a fence. As you can see, it is not a straight fence, it is a very wonky fence. And then after about six hours, here's an example of my fence afterwards, it's a lot more straighter. So I did get used to the janky controls, but they're still janky, I'm still picking up the sprinkler when I'm trying to pick some vegetables. You also have the ability to speed up using ZR and slow down using R. Um, the use of the speed is extremely useful because the normal mode is really slow, um, a bit too slow for my liking. But as you can see, the fast mode, it makes you walk a bit funky. The art style in Farm for Your Life is sort of 3D cartoon looking characters, you know, the big heads and the smaller bodies. You've got the ability to customise, which is quite nice, so you can change, choose your skin colour, hair, but there's limited wearable accessories. So I chose the skeleton outfit because I like the skeleton, but with like the hats, I think there was only three hats to choose from and then th I've chosen a pair of sunglasses and I think it was either sunglasses or no sunglasses. <laughs> the colours in this is very vibrant, it's quite nice to look at. But what I must mention is that the writing in this is very small. It's so small that when I was playing it on the TV, I mean, I know our TV is not the biggest and it is quite far from us, but I really could not read it. Um, it was best played handheld, actually, for me. So I've mentioned that I best played this in handheld mode, but there's actually no touchscreen controls. So the music for this video that you can hear now is the music from the title screen and I, f I think it's quite nice. But in game it's really low, you can't really hear it, which isn't a bad thing. 
generally when you're playing the game there's sort of the low sound of the music but also the sound of nature so like birds when you interact with a cow it makes a moo noise or kind of like a goat sounding noise to be honest and then the same with the chicken it makes a chicken noise farm for your life costs 17 pounds 99 on the e-shop 19 euros 99 and 19 dollars 99 there is a sale on at the moment so for example it's 11 pounds 69 or 12 99 euros and dollars for me this game was very much let down by the controls i can see that it can be a fun farming sim where you're doing your normal farm sim stuff but also you've got the element of the fending off the zombies by throwing your fruit and vegetables at them but i think it would work better on pc farm for your life has a story mode and an endless mode at the moment i'm on the story mode and to be honest i'm on a point where i don't know where to go it's obvious that I need a upgraded tool and I can see the upgraded axe that I need but um, I don't know how to get it. Um, I've upgraded everything in the game so far so I've got everything to do with the campsite, the farm and the restaurant but there's no indication of where to go next so I'm not entirely sure what to do. I've explored the outer woods but to no avail. So my final thoughts are that this is not a terrible game, it just shouldn't be on the Switch. The controls are like Cinderella's stepsister's foot being shoehorned into the glass slipper. It just doesn't fit. Thank you very much for that review, Sophie. So let's take a look at my game, Sun Wukong vs Robot. What is that exactly? It's a mini Metroidvania, and it is quite simple to get into, although it's not the easiest game to follow. You are a monkey with a stick, good start, and you have been imprisoned by what the game's calling a mind locker, and the only way to gain your freedom is by taking out four robots. As you'd expect, the game's world has a maze-like structure, and luckily, there is a map, and we do like our maps on this channel. Although it isn't the most detailed, I kinda got the gist of where I was for the most part. Your stick is your main mode of attack, although you can unlock projectiles. One thing I found when first playing this game is that there was a huge lack of direction, which can lead to problems. I ended up wandering off to an area that had plenty of stronger enemies, and I was dying an awful lot. I eventually just started a new file and went a different way, and the difficulty curve was a lot better. As you kill enemies you will earn EXP, these can be spent at the shop machines you'll find scattered around, where you can buy extra health or new abilities. The game explains all the different abilities in the pause menu, so make sure to keep checking that before making your purchases. You can increase your attack, defense, or grant yourself immunity to lava and electricity, as well as earning a few helpful moves. Given the game builds itself as a mini metroidvania, you'd expect it to not be a very long game, and it isn't a very long game. When I completed it, my clear time was 46 minutes, but it did take me longer than that. It was over 2 hours easily, because when you die, you go back to your most recent save. And these save points are not very frequent. There were plenty of annoying moments where I would spend ages grinding for EXP from enemies, only to die and revert back to my last save, and all that EXP was lost. But luckily, each boss fight has a save point just before it. There did seem to be an overall lack of structure in the world. In Metroidvanias, I expect areas to be locked off until I find a certain ability to allow me to access it, but that wasn't the case here. Instead, if I went into an area too early, it would just be really difficult, and when going there later, it would be a lot easier as I would be strong enough to defeat the enemies easily. I am pretty sure the second boss I defeated was not meant to be the second boss, it was the hardest by far for me, and the third and fourth bosses I defeated very quickly, the final boss in fact I beat on my first try. The game adopts a pixel art style and is reminiscent of the original Metroid, even down to the black backgrounds and orange protagonist. The sound effects are fun and the sort of thing you'd expect, and the music is minimal I found, for the most part there just wasn't any there at all. The game costs £4.99 and has a 20% discount until the 1st of July. Like I said, it took me just a couple of hours to beat and it was a very challenging couple of hours. If you like a more casual, relaxed experience, it's one to avoid, but if you like having your backside handed to you, then it's no cuphead challenge-wise, but you could do a lot worse for that price. So those were our reviews. What do you think of these two games? Do either of them take your fancy? Let us know in the comments down below, and please consider liking and subscribing to show your support. 
Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.